Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for today. Uh, check out the videos from earlier. They cover the Middle East mostly and what's going on uh, with that whole anti-Islam thing. I'm going to cover the economy in this video. I'm going to see if I can get it done in one, but if not, we'll make four videos. Um, all right, so all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, and I have some pretty interesting articles here for you. Economy has hit rock bottom census suggests on the bright side there's nowhere to go but up so half empty says poverty increased for the fourth consecutive year says npr half full but it rose at a slower rate than it has in any other previous three reports favor says 100 percent chance of global recession so investors need to prepare for a global recession that's the takeaway from the well-respected economist after his recent appearance on cnbc's fast money halftime report he says it is all but a certainty later this year or in er early 2013. Employers turn to tests to weed out job seekers. Some screens may violate, violate law, but applicants rarely have a choice. So just like as far as if you want to get a raise, well, most uh, employers know that now, that people are so desperate to work that they really don't think about even uh, giving them a raise. When applicants apply for a job online these days, they are increasingly being asked to take personality tests even before they exchange an email or have an interview with a hiring manager. Such tests are being used by companies with resumes in this tough job market as a way to prune the endless job applications they get via job boards and their uh, own sites. So here's some examples from CVS because this, this they're all doing them now. Uh, you got big corporations doing them. You got... Um, you know, like as far as uh, white collar jobs, uh, executives and stuff like that, administrative. But then you go into these little uh, fucking Burger King or uh, Kmart and Dollar General, and they're asking you psychological questions. People do a lot of things that make you angry. Uh, there's no having, there's no use having close friends. They've always let you down. Many people can't be trusted. You're unsure of what to say when you meet someone. So these are all questions that that um, they're, they're tricky, they're tricky. Um, I've had to take them before, uh, the Kmart one especially, and that was right when I was getting a college degree and I was actually working as a journalist um, stringer and uh, I was just looking for work, you know, when I got done. Little did I know in 2008 that what was coming. And uh, just recently, uh, at Dollar General, checking that out. And the sign's been up there, and I'm like, I asked the lady, I'm like, what's going on? You know, is uh, you guys can't find anybody to fill this position, punching keys in a cash register or stocking? And she's like, and she's like, ah, oh, yeah, we just haven't found anybody. That I was like, are you guys, are you guys, are you guys doing those psychological tests? She goes, yeah. And I'm like, well, that's what it is. And the, this is the thing, they're looking for robots. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for robots that don't ask any questions, that don't have, that um, basically. Um, when you have to deal with asshole customers that are completely self-absorbed, greedy pieces of shit, a lot of them, I'm not saying most of them, just saying a lot of them are, and they don't consider, they have no empathy for the people that are working, doing their jobs, serving them, and um, they treat them like shit, like they're objects, like they're nothing. And if you don't like that, and you got a job, and you got a manager that does nothing or whatever, and you start to, you know, it starts to get to you, well, then you're a no-go, so... But uh, that's what they want. They want compliant slaves in this new brave, brave new world that don't ask any questions, like I said. For more and more companies, the hiring... But Oh, yeah, and the main thing is that you want to be able to work longer hours, not without question. That's what I mean. Work harder for less. That's what they want because this is what's happening now. For more and more companies, the hiring boss is an algorithm. So when you're looking for workers to staff its call center, Xerox Corporation used to pay lots of attention to applicants who had done the job before. Then a computer program told the printer and outsourcing company that experience doesn't matter. So it says um, one who won't quit uh, before the company recoups its 5,000 investment in training is personality. Data shows that uh, creative types tend to stick around for the necessary six months. Inquisitive people often don't. Finishing up, they're talking about these um, uh, call centers uh, that basically you, you go to apply for hiring a job. And it goes on here and says a software to ask applicants to choose between statements like, I ask more questions than most people do, and people tend to trust what I say. So you, there you go. I didn't, I didn't even read this article yet. A lot of times I'm just reading these for the first time when, as you're seeing them. So when I'm saying asking questions, there you go. Literally, ask more questions. And if you're inquisitive, then uh, you may not stick around, so they may not hire you. 
unemployment rates rise in half of U.S. states. So something we, most of us know, the real unemployment numbers are worse than you are being told. Yeah, that's right. Once these people um, stop receiving benefits that uh, they paid for for unemployment, then um, what? Then they're no longer unemployed magically. They're no longer accounted uh, in unemployment rate. John Williams of Shadow Government Statistics would put the real rate of unemployment up around 23% after adding in all workers that have given up looking for work and all underemployed workers. The labor participation rate for men has fallen to 69.9%, the lowest level it's been uh, since 1948. It says here during the month of August, U.S. manufacturing sector lost 15,000 jobs. So, yeah, un uh, manufacturing jobs are pretty much going, and your government's helped to ship those jobs overseas, right? And now you got to compete, see? you got to compete in the global economy. you got to compete with Chinese people, um, you know, thousands of miles away. So, you know, it's not like the Chinese are going to start, uh, you know, living it up over there. No, their standards of living aren't going to go up much higher than they are for the average person. And it's just that ours is going down to meet theirs. So we're going to be nice and even, right? Nice, big, happy family. So incredibly, 58% of the jobs that created since the end of the last recession have been low-income jobs. So great. So, you know, I'd be, you know, really, I'd be optimistic. I'd stay, you know, uh, optimistic and be, you know, my cup is half full, half filled or whatever. But the the reality of the situation is, is it's not going to get better unless something changes. As long as you have a government uh, that protects big global corporations um, while they exploit people, as long as you have a big government bureaucracy that um, sponsors a private cartel of banks that controls the issuing of your currency and um, stuff like that. And you, basically, you don't live in a market, in a free market. You never will. You, I don't know if we ever really had. Um, then you can't really prosper. You're at the whim of these global elites. They're consolidating their wealth more and more every single day. This is my website, ggnonline.com. Um, also, the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. You can follow by email, and if you'd like to donate, it'd be very much appreciated. You can do it here on this website. So, Americans becoming more cynical about U.S. futures. So, maybe they're starting to see, right? A recent poll shows an overwhelming majority of Americans are becoming more pessimistic about the direction of their country. Yeah, because we just covered, what, that more Americans are uh, not trusting the media as much anymore. Actually, a record high, so... More Americans opting out of banking system as well. Yes, I remember in Greece originally I saw stories about them out there bartering gum and stuff like that. Now in Spain they're bartering as well. Uh, but in one place there's a man that's actually going across country and he's using only bacon, bacon as a currency. So, yeah, I didn't know this, but it's actually part of a promotion for bacon producer Oscar Meyer. So that could be the only reason why they're allowing it. But... Uh, you know, be careful. You try going out there and bartering. That's why it's illegal. Um, you can get arrested and stuff like that. Uh, you see cops harassing people at garage sales even on the weekends. So, you know, every aspect of the economy and people trading uh, has to be controlled. Over 40% gloomy about EU future, says Poll. New survey reveals that more than 40% of Europeans are pessimistic about the future outlook of the economy. Then depression suicides rise on Euro debt crisis intensifies. This is from September 4th, and I just included in here. So there's been a sharp rise in mental health problems with suicide rates, alcohol abuse, and requests for antidepressants increasing as people struggle with the psychological cost of living through a European-wide recession. <laughs> they make it sound like it's temporary, right? But it's not. It's... The uh, new new norm. Lives get shorter for less educated whites. This is also the new norm <clears throat> for a lot of people. For those with no high high school diploma, it drops four years. We're used to looking at groups and uh, complaining that their mortality rates haven't improved fast enough, but to actually go backwards is deeply troubling. Says an ex. So as as uh, we move further into this scientific dictatorship or technocracy, uh, the technocrats. Um, the kind of upper crust elites, um, you know, they're going to be okay. They're going to be eating all right, and they're going to be traveling about freely, uh, conducting commerce uh, freely. Uh, but all these um, semi-skilled workers, well, they got to go. There's no work for them, right? So they need to just die off. And there's many measures that they're that they're calling for, including um, sterilizing men and stuff like that. So that was the that was the promise of uh, technology it was going to make everything easier, make our lives better. Well, 
when they don't need you anymore, when they don't need human machines, well, then they you need to just die off. You need to go away because you're no longer an asset anymore. That's all you were before to them, to these people, if you can call them that. Tighten your belt. Again, Bank of England warns there will be no end to the squeeze on incomes anytime soon. Hopes of cost of living pressures easing have been dashed with bills rising faster than average wages. Then Britons must work harder if the country is to compete with China and India. So you got to compete with the entire world. Why can't you just have a nice little uh, community or system that they had in Spain during the revolution where you compete with each other just in your local community. You have coupons and vouchers. You don't have mon the whole money system. And uh, you, live, uh, you live a nice, healthy, free life. No, you got to compete with the entire world. You can't just, you know, uh, manage locally. Britons must work harder if the country is to compete with China and India. So it says currently under develop is a robot which can work a sewing machine. Pretty soon the garment industry will be returning to the West, but alas, there are, will be fewer jobs for Americans, Europeans, or Chinese. The end of the working classes due to the rise of machines is an elephant in the room, but as far as some people are concerned, it might as well be hiding behind the sofa. So this was all um, this was all talked about a long ago in books and, and movies, and people call it science fiction, and they snicker, and they thought it was a big fucking joke. And uh, now, see, they're living through it, and that's that's the hard part. They're living through it, and uh, they've been trained in, like like lab rats, um, conditioned like dogs, uh, to uh, to somehow accept this false reality. So, as they die off, it's it's a, it's a sad and depressing state that we live in. Uh, billionaire heiress, poor should work harder. Remember this. So, yeah, she inherited all of her money and her wealth. She says that she has a message for the poor. She goes on and she says that uh, the non-rich should stop attacking the rich and go to work. If you're jealous of those with more money, don't just sit there and complain. Do something to make yourself. So in other words, sell out your soul. You just happen to be uh, an heiress to um, a rich family. So uh, you know, I, I don't hate people to have a lot of money or more money than me. I just wish there, be, there wouldn't be these douchebags that sit there and their whole lives consist of scamming people and lying to them. Basically enforcing political law on me and everybody else, and we don't necessarily agree with these things, but uh, they use the government, like I said, this is what corporatism is all about, uh, for their own needs, their own benefits, for the elites, for the rich, for the, for the corporations. Step right up and take a ride on the Thomas Friedman's hamster wheel to good life. The truth is, if you want a decent job that you will uh, lead to a decent life today, you'll have to work harder, regularly reinvent yourself, obtain at least some form of post-secondary education to make sure that you're engaged in lifelong learning, and play by the rules. That's not a bumper sticker, but we terribly mislead people by saying otherwise. The net worth of 400 of the richest Americans has jumped 13%, and those 400 now make up one-eighth of the entire U.S. economy. And what do they promote, especially this guy? Oh, eugenics. Yeah, killing you. Things are getting worse. Medium household income has fallen four years in a row. So income has fallen four years in a row. Obama in 1998, I actually believe in redistribution. So... So of all the actors or programming icons, John Cusack is one of the few actors I do actually like uh, growing up in the 80s. He says, is Obama just another Ivy League asshole? So I think I can answer that for you, John, but I'll leave it up to our viewers. The Justice Department defends not prosecuting corporate leaders for white-collar crimes. So that's what it's all about, right? Corporatism. So Obama says you can't change Washington from the inside, so there's nothing you can do about it, guys. See that? All you can do is go on the outside and vote, right? Vote for Obama again. Maybe he can bring you about change. God, what a racket, dude. Fast lane to give the rich priority treatment at Heathrow Border Control. They have announced plans to fast-track passport lanes, allowing rich travelers priority treatment. That's the technocrats. You like that guy? A former Justice Souter. Pervasive civic ignorance in U.S. could bring on dictatorship. Well, I think we already have it. European Union officials call on fellow countries to give up control of the banks. You have self-appointed Future of Europe group bids for foreign policy and defense clout. The informal group appears to emulate an unsuccessful attempt by EU leaders to task a group of wise men to make proposals of the future of Europe. Hmm. Maybe Europe's most powerful countries are calling for an elected EU president, a super president, remember? They want a pan-European foreign ministry. They also want a European army. Also calling for an EU-wide single passport as well to put in place a real status of European citizenship. Well, didn't you know? You're a citizen of the world. The Federal Reserve has been given police powers with guns and patrol cars. 
the Department of Justice lists bumper stickers that criticize the government as possible terrorists. YouTube videos pulled for government criticism has increased by 70%. Occupy anniversary draws more cops than protesters, while police face no charges over pepper spraying protests. Thank you.